Nature versus nurture, one of, if not the most fascinating questions in, in psychology. psychology. Are you more defined by your genetics or by your environment and your upbringing? Today, we're gonna look into the science of personality and personality type to see what the research says about why we are who we are. That's right. Research, not just FJ making stuff up. <laughs> okay, there will be a little <laughs> FJ, a little making stuff up. Liar. But now let me nurture you with a sponsored segment. Oh my gosh, I got ESFJ on my personality test. What do you think? Is it right? Am I ESFJ? I mean, that seems... I better take another test just to be sure. Sure. Oh, uh, excuse me. Where is the nearest particle accelerator, my good man? Are you good? Well, indubitably, but this test says I am INTP. The logician. Yeah, somehow I don't think that's right. OMG, I gotta take another one! Okay. Look into my eyes. What? I am going to look into your very soul. Because I got INFJ on my last test. <laughs> wow. What type am I? These results are all over the flipping place. Just go to cloverleaf.me. Take their 16 types assessment. It's free. It's reliable. Whew. Looks like I am ESFJ after all. What's cool is you can get coaching tips sent right to your email inbox. Gasp. My coworkers would love that. And your work team can get a 14 day free trial. Oh my gosh, so we can learn more about each other and how we can work better together. There you go. Are you sure? I'm not INTP though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Good, because I don't even know what a particle accelerator does. Go to my link in the description to take Cloverleaf's free and accurate 16 types assessment today. And get that free trial for your work team, baby. Thanks to Cloverleaf for sponsoring that segment of the video. Now, back to the regular content that you that you clicked on the video for to understand how early your personality can be influenced we actually need to go back to when you were a baby that's right do you remember back then <laughs> i doubt it i don't know why <laughs> it's not even funny the main reason why many scientists believe there is a strong genetic component to personality is because babies are born with a temperament like how, how have you met some babies yeah you could you know they got different temperaments babies all ain't the same there are easy babies who are super chill and just go along with whatever. whatever. Like if there's a problem, instead of crying or freaking out, they express a little discomfort reasonably and they adapt to it. Like if you accidentally spill some milk on an ISTP baby, they're just gonna be like, hey, no worries. I ain't gonna cry over it. Cause it's just spilt milk. What do I look like, some chump? <laughs> then there are difficult babies, okay? The babies who are just not having a great time, man. They are cranky. They cry a lot for no real reason. Kind of like me. <laughs> and they are generally high need. Am I just describing myself? They're like a bossy ESTJ baby who just wants their way. You donkey! Where's the formula? <laughs> there are slow to warm babies who start out difficult and then they get easier as they become more accustomed to new situations. Like the introvert who says they don't like parties, but if you can actually get them to go to a party, then they have a good time at the party. These temperaments exist despite baby's upbringings. Essentially, you can't teach a baby how to react, so their little baby personalities just kind of do whatever they're gonna do. Baby's gonna babe, you know what I'm saying? This leads many scientists to believe that personality does have, at the very least, some foundational component that exists in your genetics. Another reason why researchers think there's a genetic component to personality is twins, specifically, Identical twins who were raised apart. Identical twins, as opposed to fraternal twins, have the exact same genes. They both got Levi's, they both got uh, <laughs> Wrangler. Is that even a jean brand? I don't know. It wasn't a good joke, Frank. So what better way to see if personality is genetic or environmental than to study identical twins who have the same genes, but different upbringing. One study in particular is pretty cool because it studied identical twins and their Myers-Briggs personality type. So the study looked at over one 100 identical twins raised apart and 92 of their spouses. The twin spouses were chosen because they have similar environments to the twins but not the same genetics. Because if they did, that would be illegal. I'm calling the FBI. So if the environment played the biggest role in your personality, you would expect the twins to share traits with their spouse, not so much with their sibling who was raised apart in a different environment. The study showed that twins have about a 0.6 correlation in their extroversion, introversion, and thinking feeling scores. Frank, I'm not a scientist. I don't know what 0.6 means. It sounds like kind of a low score. Actually, no. no. That 0.6 means they were quite likely to share a similar personality score in those areas. More 
more than random chance. The sensing, intuition, and judging, perceiving traits have a 0.4 correlation, which is not as high, but still a pretty solid indicator that there are clearly shared traits between the twins. Now, it's important to point out that the twins' personalities weren't exactly the same. They just correlated to a statistically significant degree compared to the spouses. The results of this study suggest there is a meaningful impact of your genetics on your personality despite your upbringing. A very well-known study was also done using identical twins with the Big Five personality model, which is a scale more typically used with scientific personality research. This study found very similar results with twins having scores that were 40 to 60 percent similar, which is, funnily enough, almost exactly the same as the MBTI study. Does this mean MBTI and the 16 personalities are scientific now? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but it's really interesting. Now, all this data might suggest that your personality is largely, if not entirely, defined by your nature, aka your genetics, but that's not the whole story. Your environment, where you grew up, the type of family you have, your friend groups, all of these shape your personality as well. Or at least, how your personality presents itself. Like, maybe you live in a culture where everyone is pretty introverted, and it's seen as rude to be overly extroverted and outgoing. So, you adapt to your environment, even if you are naturally an extrovert. That wouldn't make you not an extrovert, but instead, you might be a little toned down compared to, say, an extrovert from America, where the culture is pretty openly loud and talkative. Or maybe you're like an ISTJ and you grow up in a family of intuitive types. You might grow an appreciation and interest in some intuitive topics, like, say, philosophy. It's very abstract. It's not something that an ISTJ would usually be very into. The nurture component to personality goes deeper than just your family and culture, though. Researchers have made note of the difference between a shared environment versus a non-shared environment when it comes to siblings. So a shared environment is like your house. Siblings typically have the same house, access to the same food, the same neighbors, the same Nintendo 64 you gotta fight over, all that sort of stuff. Non-shared environments are the things that people don't share with their family members. So say, for example, we have a brother and a sister who are both INFJs. They're the same age, they go to the same school, but they have different teachers. Because they have different teachers, they're in different classrooms. Because they're in different classrooms, they make different friends. And because they make different friends, the sister becomes a billionaire entrepreneur and the brother ends up in a street gang called the Van Buren Boys. Okay, maybe it's not that extreme, but the INFJ brother might fall into a friend group that is outgoing and social, so he ends up more interested in spending his time hanging out with friends in person. While the INFJ sister might make a friend group who is into technology and they're more reclusive, they're a bunch of nerds. <laughs> so she prefers to stay home and spend hours on the computer. Studies have shown that these non-shared environments have a bigger influence on your personality than the shared ones. Essentially, it's the little differences in our life and environment that can snowball into changing our personalities as we grow older. Now, the most interesting aspect of nature versus nurture in personality is where the two meet, where they become intertwined. Your nature can have a big impact on how you fit into or adapt to your environment. So maybe you're an INTJ and you're lucky enough to be in a family of people who appreciate your thoughts and ideas. Or you're an ESFP and you have a fun-loving family who loves to live life to the fullest. These types of situations are going to lead certain people to have a very easy time integrating into their environment. So in these situations, we might expect the more stereotypical versions of these personality types. What they look like when there is, there's not a ton of factors that they need to adapt to. It's like, hey baby, you're an INTJ. Grow up to be an INTJ. That's fine. On the other hand, maybe you're an INFP in a family who doesn't respect your emotional needs. Or you're an INTP who is surrounded by people who find your ideas bothersome. They're like, dude, stop thinking so much, you egghead. In these situations, people need to adapt to a less than accommodating environment. And that's where you get versions of each type that have some quirks to them. You get an INFP who has a cold exterior or an INTP who keeps all the ideas to themselves. They're not the stereotype of what you'd expect from the 16 personalities. New environments can also act as a big catalyst for personality change and research shows that personality changes a lot between the ages of 18 to 30 and this is because this is the age range where people become independent, move out, and get to experience new environments. Specifically ones that they have chosen for themselves now that they're adults. Some research has shown that it might even be environments that they did not choose for themselves as well. Knowing that our personality changes as we 
we age and experience new things leads to a pretty big question of, can you change your personality? This is a complicated question. It's so complicated I can barely spit it out of my mouth. And it's a question not all scientists agree on. Now, when we're talking about your Myers-Briggs type, your 16 personalities type, at least according to the theory, your type never changes. I know, I'm gonna get blowback in the comments. There's so many comments where it's like, hey, I'm a INTP, formerly uh, uh, ESFJ or whatever. It's like, uh, <laughs> sorry, no, that's not how it works. More than likely, you just identified with different traits at different times. That doesn't mean that your personality type changed. So that perceived change of what your type is, is real. The Carl Jung and the Briggs family believe that type was kind of like a starting point. You're hardwiring and that those aspects would remain constant over your lifespan, but that doesn't mean you can't change your actions and how you present yourself. Say for example, you're an ENFP and one day you notice that your wild and crazy ideas got you into a little bit of trouble. You had some misadventure. You perhaps had an escapade or two that went awry because you didn't think something through all the way. You got into a little bit of a pickle. <laughs> Frank, just get... <laughs> so you, as a person, as an individual, can make the conscious decision to take re to take responsibility, to slow down, to think things through more logically, and to be more organized and methodical. And you can build those habits so long term that eventually it may appear to be so easy for you that someone who's looking for stereotypical ENFP traits might not see them in you. But of course this goes for any type. I'm just using the ENFP as an example. The difference is that when we use techniques like this to change our behaviors and our thoughts, we're trying to change our natural processing. Even if you change behaviors and become super organized and logical, at your core, you would still be an ENFP in that example. Even if an INTJ learns you know, all the fashionable clothes and whatnot, they're still an INTJ. Even if an ESFJ learns how to be very logical, they know how to do math, <laughs> they didn't become an INTP. They're still an ESFJ, but they took responsibility for those other aspects of their personality that were maybe a bit weaker. This is the same logic that scientists apply to changing our more general personality traits. We can change our beliefs, our coping strategies, and our actions, but all of these are still in reference to our original personality. Your personality in general, overall, can change. You can be whatever kind of person you want to be. You just have to use your innate personality, your MBTI type, as a launching point to get there. Now I know you might be thinking to yourself, Frank, give us the scoop. What is the official FJ opinion on if your Myers-Briggs type is like hardwired fully into you when you're born or if it takes some time to get solidified? Because the research would suggest that identical twins don't always score with the exact same personality type. My hypothesis is that your genes set you up to have a certain range of types that you could be when you're born. You're probably born generally with the temperament that your personality type is going to end up with. In other words, the first and last letters. You're probably born as an EJ, an IJ, an IP, or an EP. I would go even further to say that you're probably born with your dominant function determined for you. So when you're born, it's basically, am I going to be an INFJ or an INTJ? Am I going to be INFP or an ISFP? And look, this is really just a hypothesis, me speculating based on the data available, that certain factors in your environment activate your genes in whatever way, and sometime in childhood to solidify that personality type. So if I had to throw a number out there, I don't know, I would say by the time you're 8, 10, 12, you probably have that fully baked Myers-Briggs personality type. But in the early childhood years, when you're a baby and such, it's close but it's not quite fully there. It's still waiting on those environmental factors to shape you. Take it or leave it. <laughs> My hypothesis, but it's the official FJ stance. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay cool and attractive. They say a stranger's come to 